on the Mayfly bench, this build your own clone green pony kit. So I'm looking forward to building this kit. It's the first time I've ever built an effects pedal. Interesting. So um, this is for a pro player in town who wanted to give this a try. So the green pony is kind of a clone of a clone. Um, the original pedal was a clone centaur. And then what happened later is Maxon did a version of the clone centaur. And this is a version of the Maxon. The main thing about the clone centaur is that with a single potentiometer, it's actually a dual gang pot to uh, adjust the balance between a clean signal and a distorted signal. So it's kind of got a little mixture of both channels built inside of it. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, I have no idea what it sounds like. I have no idea how the kit's gonna go together, but we're gonna find out. Okay, here's the box. My address has been blanked out for security purposes. Let's get a box cutter, open it up, and see what they give us. But the main event is this little package here. Build your own clone, green pony kit. Go to byocelectronics.com, green pony instructions PDF. So here's the stuff. Here's the parts that we had to look at before. And here's all of the instructions. The instructions are excellent. They're very detailed. If you are new to pedal building or building in general, but you can solder, you will have no trouble constructing this kit. Every detail is put in there, which is great. Now, more importantly, let's have a look at this schematic. So this is a cool little pedal. Your input comes through here and goes through a little buffer by this FET. So that's kind of neat. Now this potentiometer, depending on which way you turn it, it either passes more signal through the clean portion of the circuit or more signal through the distorted portion of the circuit. But remember, this is a dual pot. So this pot, when you turn it, you actually turn this one as well. And this is, of course, your gain control. So this determines how much distortion this part of the circuit is generating. So what's cool about this is that the more you turn up the, the distortion, the more signal of distorted character goes through the rest of the signal path. And what's cool up here is you have uh, different flavors of not only clipping, so you've got diode clipping, uh, sorry, these are LED clipping, you've got asymmetrical diode clipping, or none, if you set the switch in the middle, or you've got a little tone control circuit there too, so that's pretty cool. The tone circuit is a little active circuit, which is neat, and at the end you have a volume control which feeds its own uh, operational amplifier, and the output impedance is very low, it's only 1K, which I think is cool. Another thing that I think is cool in this particular clone is that it uses a dual rail nine volt supply. This little thing here is a charge pump. That thing takes your nine volt battery signal, does magic to it, and creates a minus nine volt signal. What that means is you get a full 18 volts of swing on the output if you really wanna drive something hard. And that's neat. Here's a big bag of parts. So the printed circuit board itself, it's a double-sided board, and it's fairly well laid out, it appears to be high quality, so screen looks good, a 3PD switch, these appear to be alpha, and they are indeed alpha pots, which are, which are fine. These jacks are not switch crap, Oops. in fact this is the same jack that I rejected when I built my Deluxe Reaver build probably has all the various, oh yes, all the various resistors, capacitors, and integrated circuits inside there. Now I bought this kit with an enclosure. In fact, this is a nice painted enclosure. I spent the money because I hate painting stuff. Ooh, very nice. Everything is pre-drilled and it looks snazzy. The instructions, like I said before, are very complete full picture of what the thing should look like when you're done. Part list, little handy things like for the alpha pots, you clip off the little tabs. Step one, populating the circuit board. So here I've got everything laid out. I have the board components here, I have the board, and I have some instructions about 
where things should go. For resistors, if you don't know your resistor color code, I've got a cheat for you. Bring over my ohm meter as I measure what it is. In this case, this is a 1K resistor. And I figure out where it is. In that case, it's right there. And I install it. Now I like to use a lead bending jig for these things. Bend the leads over and insert it into the board. Ta-da! So we'll do that with all the resistors. Before we go on, I'd like to point out that I like to double check that I've got the right resistance in each spot with the meter. That way it won't be impossible to debug or fix once everything's put together. Well, it's a little later on and I went and jumped ahead a little bit. As you can see, I've got most of the things soldered up. So next is to attach flying leads to the various spots and uh, then solder to the case. When you get to this stage, you find the potentiometers actually mount to the back side of the board. The drive control sits right like that. And it's pretty close to the board. So I took the liberty of covering these connectors with some Teflon tape to insulate them just in case they're making contact. We are making progress. The PCB is mounted inside the case and all the potentiometers and switches are soldered to the back side. You can see they're stuck through the end here. Now you do it this way so that you make sure everything is aligned and uh, so mechanically everything fits in the case. It is a bit, a bit of a pain in the butt to solder all these guys, but if you're careful and take your time and always be conscious of where the tip of your soldering iron is, it's really not so bad. As you can see, all the flying leads are attached. Now we just have to attach the input and output jack, attach these flying leads to the power connector, and these ones to the switch. One of the things I like to do when I have a unit open like this is to take a cord, and plug it in, to make sure you don't get any interference or any pinching of wires or any weirdness going on. But anyway, Plug something into the input jack, battery's attached, press the button, ooh look at that, it's got a light on it. The pedal is done. It looks great and sounds great, but don't take my word for that. Let's hook it up and let's get some demos. Mm -hmm. 